Tunnel's Guide for Rust Console Edition for the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, the Next Generations, and everything in between. And of course, I'm Jade Monkey. Okay, so all of this hits main branch, also known as Normal Rust here, February 29th, 2024. And we've been playing this actively over on PTB, so we're going to give you a nice rundown of all of this. Clearly, we're on the PC side now, um, but we'll have plenty of videos here in the future that will actually showcase all of this here on the console side, because that's where we play. Uh, one of the most notable differences is you see this terminal outside here on the PC version. This is for the underground train system. Uh, this just connects the surface to the subterranean. Um, we don't have that yet, as this will just be an empty parking lot, so just keep that in mind, so this structure won't be there, but everything else is functionally the same. So let's go ahead and break it down. So we have some main entrances here. This is the main entrance. You can see it there, um, where it gets its name. Military tunnels. Oop, getting tickled. Then we have one of the exits called, I call this the recycler exit, and that rusty shack there in the right-hand corner is a recycler and a food crate. On the opposite side, we have the sewer exit which is really two exits in one we have the tunnel side and then the top of the sewer i uh, met with two very cute scientists tickle tickle so those are just some places that you can exit okay so what we're going to do the breakdown here so uh, again apologies if i have to pause the cough or whatever so i'll try to mute myself as much as possible you don't need this much gear to do the tunnels um, i brought a bunch of different weapon combinations here to kind of show you some of the different uh, ideas that we have for this I will be running through with invincibility as to keep things kind of flowing here, as this will take us roughly 20-ish minutes to complete. Um, just know, uh, really all you need is a weapon, uh, usually a bone knife, uh, at least 26 rad protection, and you don't even need cards necessarily to get paid. So how we're going to break this down is we're going to do this with a no card situation to show you how much loot you can get, and then we're going to curtail right into the full cards. So if you want to do all the cards, you need all three and then two fuses as well. Um, obviously, we have the night vision, and then some of the weapons are decked out with, like, the extended magazine. I uh, will put in this burst module a bit later to kind of show you some of the different combinations. But this is mostly for timing, to show you the puzzles, and also how many rounds you may need, depending on what kind of hype that you're going to be running. Okay, so, obviously, I'm invincible. So, I look at this a lot like a... And I'll also be dumping the loot on the ground, so you guys can see that, too. Um, this is very similar to the cargo ship or even the oil rig, so keep that in mind as well. Kind of, you push the scientists, you cut them up for, for cloth, and then you keep healing, and then you push forward. Another reason why we're going invincibility, because it's just going to take a minute. Uh, that pipe's a nice ambush spot, by the way. And um, a lot of times, I keep these flares, because if you don't have a torch on the end of your weapon, this can be very handy. Now, this splits into two sections here, the right side and the left side. We're going to show you the no card way first, so we're going to split left. Sorry, I had to cough there for a second. So if you actually are quick and move around the corner, you can avoid that scientist in the back there. These scientists back here, you can avoid those completely. Here's the thing with this, and then obviously you would cut him up. These scientists do respawn quickly. That is by design. So just remember, you can catch people down here pretty easily. So there's two scientists here. Um, we'll use some of the grenades. Uh, F1 grenades can be purchased at Bandit Camp if you didn't know. Very handy for situations. Whoops, I'm a bad shot. There we go, there's one. So I think when Bob and I did this, we said it was like roughly two full stacks of bullets to get these crates down here. So the first run we're doing here is we call this the uh, the Elite Crate Run. Uh, you don't need any cards to run this. <coughs> Just some bullets and some healing. So again, very similar to the cargo ship. And the um, the oil rig. Here's the other thing, too. I keep telling people, um, even if you're solo, you're like, yes, this is more difficult for sure. But don't concentrate necessarily on just running the cards. Concentrate on grubbing other players. I'm telling you, it's going to get you paid. Oops, I kind of forgot he was there, to be honest. There's one here on this uh, wall, and then there's one on this catwalk back here, and then there's one right here. That little cutie right there. Okay, let's turn on our uh, night vision. And if you're running this solo, or I'm sorry, duo or higher, what's really great about this is we have the down system now, so you can crawl away. So if you have good food and water, you can actually um, get picked up rather uh, easily by your friends. And plus there's a timer. Hang on one second. Oh, nice little cough there. Oops. Let me do this. 
and then we'll go back and do this. Yeah, it's a bit easier to see. So what you can do is you can run along the side here and actually kind of pick these guys off. Uh, this is the tip most terrible way to do it, right? Or <laughs> up the gut. Uh, go over this side piece here and slowly work your way up. Obviously, I'm being sloppy right now. But um, if you kind of work your way up here, you can kind of skip some of these guys back here. This is the storage room. This is the first green card room. But actually, since we're going to do the no card run, <coughs> you can probably just keep pushing up here on the left side. There'll be a scientist right there. Another one at range. Ooh. And actually, right where my halo is facing, that's where the first crates are going to be. And there are actually four, or it can be up to four uh, elite crates, which is actually really good. Just uh, solidifying the fact that... Oh, jeez. Solidifying the fact that... Here, let me go ahead and switch to this, this weapon here. The, uh, the LR. Oh, jeez. Obviously, you wouldn't run into sloppy. You'd be down, for sure. My aim is good. But what's cool about this is you can run down here and actually kind of wait for people to come down, too. But since the respawns are so quick, it actually makes this uh, a bad place to camp. And you can also use the sounds of the uh, the scientists there at the at the bend, at uh, the first fork we had, to know when people are coming down on you. And there's so many dark spots. Like, look, when I turn the, on the night vision, you can really start to see just how nasty it is. And yes, you can use Molotovs on here too. That's also part of the update. Dude, am I a bad shot even with a mouse or what? Okay, so this is the... The cargo crate right here that's going to have all of these different... See what I mean? Boom. Paid. Look at AK, dude. No card. See what I'm talking about? Disgusting. Obviously, we don't have the MLRS yet. But if we did, we'd get that there. Elite crate. Dude, paid. And then you can run back out on the right-hand side. So what we're going to do... Hang on, I got a cough. What we're going to do is now we're going to take it to the green card. And remember how I said these guys respawn quickly? And yes, you probably want to use a bone knife or a hunting knife on these guys to get more cloth. Again, very similar to cargo ship. So what I like to do is I like to clean this back channel first. And then we're going to work our way up to the green section. Because in order to do these puzzles, this is where you need to start. Also, remember those exits we were talking about? That's one of the exits. So if somehow you've got this timer or this door open and you know someone's coming down on top of you that's very geared, you can leave the uh, the monument this way as well. This is a pretty good spot to have a couple F1s. Remember, you can buy these Bandito Camp. I think I said that earlier. Uh, the new M4 is pretty nice for this as well. Look at this little cutie. Come here, buddy. Boom. Obviously, I have some ridiculous attachments on here, but that's okay. And then we have one back here. And again, we're now doing the green card part of this. And see what I mean? Like, these guys have green cards galore. i uh, try to remember to loot this stuff. So you guys can see what it is. Okay, so the reason why you clear this down first is because the switch for this is on a timer. And that timer goes pretty quick. Yeah, see what I mean? Look at that. That's crazy. And even if you're just coming down here with a compound bow, taking out a few scientists and going back home, that's a good start. You don't have to do this to be totally paid. Because remember, when you're broke, anything's good. It might I suggest this is an excellent spot down here to kind of, uh, if you hear somebody coming, take a kneel. Wait for them to come around. Clap, clap. Double barrel all day. Hide in the shadows. Use the game sense that you have. Smarter. Usually gets you uh, paid in here. And people are usually panicking so badly, uh, they never see you coming. Now, here's another recommendation. If you're going to be playing this on wipe day, try to keep your base not next to military tunnels, but like on the outskirts. Does that make sense? Because this is going to be high traffic. If this was anything like it was when this first came out on PTB, it's going to be pandemonium. So just kind of assume that. What we did is we lived far away from this monument, and then we created like a two-by-one and just kind of came up here and ran it, and then we'd run all our loot back with like a horse or something. I like to run this with the Timmy in this example for the most of it, um, just because this is a bit more realistic. 
Although I've seen people back here with um, compound bows, so you uh, there's some some diehards for sure. Okay, so now all the way back down to that green spot is clear. Well, we have one more guy right here. Here's the room. I'm a good shot. All right, here's our first diesel container. We got a couple containers here. There you go. Let's see what that looks like. Food. And this is where you're gonna stick your first fuse. And then hit the switch and then run all the way down. This is why you want to clear it. And honestly, by the time this is pretty much complete, these guys are going to start spawning back. Obviously, we just killed these guys here, but the first left-hand turn we're about to cross into is going to start to spawn in. So, just... It, it's a big part of this to be like, okay, what's the timing? What's the sound outside? There's people countering this. They'll be in various states. You can really tell who's been in here by how the scientists spawn back in. So just pay attention to that timing. Uh, I would suggest, because I know this will be hard at first, um, just keep running it um, you know, with minimal loot so you can get a feel for it because you'll be surprised at what you can come up with. And then you'll get more and more comfortable and then you can keep going deeper and deeper. That's what she said. Okay. Now, since we have that timer running, I think I hit the switch. I hope I did. If not, I'll use my admin abilities and fly in there. Uh, this can be a great place to have one of your teammates hold. See how this is lit up now? Perfect. I'm going to go in with the shotgun. There should be a guy to the right. No? Only one? Okay. Well, be advised because uh, they'll keep stacking on you. Okay, so we, we've got some loot here. Um, Millie crate. And then we've got an exit. You have to hit this switch here for this to be active. So, uh, this is one of the exit spots here. If you have another uh, person with you, once your fuse expires, that's going to close. But what's cool is you can have your teammates, you can throw all your loot on one of your guys and have them run out. And then your guy here can hold this position and then open the door for you when you all come back. So this can be a great exit plan or also uh, a re-entry plan. Especially if everybody else up this tunnel here uh, respawns in. So once that's on, you can actually open that up. Now that the laboratory switch is active. Now hopefully I can do this fast enough to actually move all the way in deeper. Let me take a swig here because my, my throat's getting dry. Sorry, I'm still getting over it. the sickness. Uh, yeah, this tunnel's great. It's so loaded, man. I love it. Ah, okay. Let's keep moving down the tube here. We'll see some more scientists. I can hear some back here. And again, don't be afraid to use your F1s. They're kind of cheap, and if you're trying to run this pretty quickly, um, it's not bad to just buy them outright. And again, a hazmat suit's not bad, but it doesn't offer a lot of um, penetration protection. You can see why we're doing this with invincibility, because I'd have to heal after all these engagements, and it just makes it so much longer. That's actually a place you can just kind of hang up that actually goes nowhere. It's a collapsed tunnel. <coughs> You'll see there'll be a lot of picks at, uh, pick axes down here, more diesel barrels. Sorry, I had a cough. A couple more clowns up here. And this is where you're going to use blue card and red card. Here's one of the blue card actions. Boop. Oh, I forgot there was a guy there. Let's use the prototype. So in order to activate this, we're going to need to go back around. Oh, wait, no, we can activate it here. Okay. I did not know that. Nice. Okay. Well, here's one of the ways you can activate it. Uh, you just hit the switch there, but another way you can do it is if you go back around. Actually, I didn't know that. Oddly enough. This is the way I usually hit that laboratory switch, and then we come around this back way. Which is right here. And then you have a whole nother fuse set. Woo! And you pop your other fuse in here. And now you're going to be using your red card. And this is where the other lead crates will be positioned. should be active. Oh, it helps if I hit the switch, doesn't it? Duh.
And this can get pretty Hector Ramirez. You're going to see some big boys here on the left and right. It's not a bad idea to throw a couple grenades in. Oh. Dude, how bad am I? Here we go. Couple of these guys respawn quick, so be careful. And you can see these uh, big boy crates right here. There's actually a lot of mill crates this time. Oh, backpacks, I wish we had those. Elite crate. But you can already start to see that first stop that we had was like really good for just getting started. It's nice to have another red card monument on the board that's on land, you know what I mean? Oh man, look at that. Industrial update, please leave in the comments down below who wants that industrial update next. I do. Let's reload. A couple more scientists back here, if I'm not mistaken. You start to realize that we're the experiment. And remember that first exit? Oh, I'm sorry, the second exit that was like the sewer exit? I think that's where this one leads, if I'm not mistaken. So once you have this all cleared out, you're good to go. You hit this, and there should be another dude down here. Yep. Those are the spaz guys. They're pretty nasty. And as you know, as quickly as we did this, it definitely takes some uh, some timing. You'll you'll definitely get wrecked a few times. So try to put as many bags outside, and just remember that you're going to need at least 26 rad protection. And then boom. You're back out. Now, you could take... Whoa! That guy respawned quick. Now, you can either go up here this way and exit through one of the tunnels, or you can go all the way up to the top on the sewer grate itself and then exit that way. And remember, it's not your loot until you get entirely home. So you can really start to see how military tunnels is just a good monument overall. It's nice to have some spacing between launch site and... Um, you know, just in general, because, you know, most people camped outside launch site. And I'm not saying people still won't do that, but this just gives us uh, more options. And honestly, I think it's better for solos in this particular monument. You've seen us do it many times where we actually grub a lot of the bigger groups that come in, and it's actually that's where we get paid. So there you go. That's the breakdown of the military tunnels coming very soon. Probably by the time you guys are watching this, it's already going to be out. And so I would urge you guys to try this. Even if you're solo, even if you're getting wrecked, I'm telling you, it's a promising monument. You're going to love it. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next live stream slash video. If you're looking for a good uh, bunker base, especially with some transportation, might I point you towards the horse barn bunker base. And hopefully we'll see you in the next live stream slash video or even on our custom server. Love you. Bye. Oops, 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 oops.